you know, he, he was on camera, you know, strong arming this, this little Indian deli owner before right. the whole thing. And, uh, you know, years later on the anniversary of his death, uh, people in the local community would hold like a protest to commemorate his death and whatnot. And after a couple of years, they started de- making demands of the deli, right? The deli, the deli owner, you, you had to, um, close down on this day first it's a day really? then it's yeah, i didn't know that then it's a weekend right um then you, they, they demanded that you stop selling this particular good right demands that had nothing like to what? do with there was some kind of some brand of medicine that was thought to be harmful that they oh, jesus and then eventually the michael brown's father or, or mother the demand was made that they you need to give us the whole store so this is a this is to me this is practically a parable okay i can perfectly understand why the community is is um heartbroken over the death of michael brown can't really understand why they made a demand of this place in the first place other than they're angry that this guy called 911 which was totally his right but you see how every demand was met until and and the second a demand was met there's a new demand right? right and it's a game And that's how the reparations mindset works. There is no end. There is no completion. There is no closure to come to. There will just be endless demands. And at a certain point, you simply have to say, no, this is not a game we are going to play. It's 2020 um, and we have to move on. We don't forget the past. You don't even really have to forgive. But you have to acknowledge at a certain point that this did not happen to you. And we have a country to run. Well, nothing makes me angrier than stuff that didn't happen to me. Because I can't get right. Because I can't get right.